Hello everyone and welcome to lesson 39 where we're going to focus on parallel phrasing. Now if you don't know what parallel phrasing is then I don't blame you because it's very rarely mentioned in English language course books. This is another one of those writing skills that you don't find out about until it's too late. That you, Until you've been writing for a long time already and then someone like me for example says this is something you really need to be aware of. So parallel phrasing is about the logical structure behind your ideas in a list. So this very much relates to the last lesson that we had a look at when I was talking about creating lists and using bullet points. It's another thing to think about when you're creating a list and that is to make sure that every point you're making uses the same class. And when I say class, I mean the same class of grammar or the same class of vocabulary even. So if, you've got, if you're creating a list of a number of different points, make sure all of those points begin with infinitives or gerunds or prepositional phrases or whatever they might be. Just make sure as much as it's possible to do so that all of the points begin in the same class. If you don't do this, if you present a list which has got lots of different classes for all of the different points, you potentially could be creating an illogical list or at least causing the reader to try and work out what's going on. And as we know from previous videos, if you are making the reader try to interpret what you are writing because it's not clear, this is not a successful piece of writing. So by using parallel phrasing or ensuring the class is the same, you are making it easier for the reader to understand the list, which is good. And it helps you as well because it, pr it presents your ideas in a logical, grammatically correct way. Okay. Enough of the introduction, let's get on to an example. So we've got an example here, uh, tasks. Write the memo in the afternoon presentation, have made sure the team knows what to do. Okay, so this is an, an initial list. Straight away, you've had some thoughts. What do I have to do today? Let's just write them down on a piece of paper. Here, there is very much a lack of organization and we can see that when we introduce parallel phrasing. If we, were, if we were to write our list like this, tasks, write the memo, give a presentation in the afternoon, and make sure the teams know what to do, here we've introduced parallel phrasing. My phone is just interrupting me there. We've introduced parallel phrasing by using infinitive forms at the beginning of each of those points. And infinitive forms are a powerful way to communicate a message because as we know from the very first lessons that we had to look at, verbs are the most important um, class of language in the English language. Okay, time for the teaching tips. Now, it's easy to think, okay, Simon told me to use a list, I'm using lists, suddenly my writing is going to be fantastic. It's not as simple as that. Using a list is good, However, we also have to think about parallel phrasing. If we don't, there is a danger that you will introduce a lack of consistency in the list which challenges the understanding of the reader. Once again, I know that from personal experience as a proofreader and a copy editor. When I have a list that doesn't use parallel phrasing, it means I have to work out what's going on. How does that point relate to that point? That point's written in the past, that point's written in the future, this point has got a gerund, this point has got um, a noun. What's going on here? The, the list doesn't make sense and that means I have to do the work as a reader and as we know, if a reader has to interpret the text, this is not a successful piece of writing. So, by using parallel phrasing, you avoid a lack of logic or coherency in your writing, which of course helps you to present yourself as a more accomplished writer. The other thing to mention, of course, and this is quite an in-depth thing and I can do lessons about this in the future, is that good use of parallel phrasing helps to signpost, that is to say, direct the reader. So firstly, secondly, thirdly, in the morning, in the, eve uh, in the afternoon, in the evening, etc, etc, or persuade. So if we use verb forms or gerunds or continuous forms or perfect forms, whatever the context allows, 
by using clever use of parallel phrasing, we are actually we are persuading the reader to think in a certain way. Now, if your writing is anything to do with persuasion, so if you're writing to a judge, you're writing to opposing counsel, you're writing to a business partner, you're writing to a particular client, and persuasion is part of your writing, then parallel phrasing is definitely something for you to think about. Okay, time for you guys to have a go at some questions. And if you are supporting me on Patreon and you've got access to my Patreon page, please click on the link below this video and download the questions. Once you've done them, then please have a look at my answer video. If you're watching this on Facebook, LinkedIn, or on my other social media, YouTube, for example, then please think about joining me on Patreon where you'll get access to my online courses. Okay, so these are the questions I'd like you to do. I'd like you to read the texts below. I'd like you to put the information into lists so we're practicing the, uh, the, the topic that we looked at in the last lesson. And I'd like you to make sure you use parallel phrasing. So all of those texts have got errors in the class, errors in logic, and you have to sort that out. So by way of example, this is the one that we had a look at earlier on. Tasks, write the memo in the afternoon presentation, have made sure the team knows what to do. Okay, so we want to somehow unify the infinitive form, the prepositional phrase, and the perfect form. So choose whatever class you want, whether it's a gerund, whether it's an infinitive, whether it's whatever it might be, choose a class, unify the points in the list, and then come up with something like this. Write the memo, give a presentation, make sure the team knows what to do.